There are so many different ideas on what's going to happen over the next six months to three years in terms of the global economy. You've got old hats like Fred Harrison, who I absolutely love commenting that he reckons we'll be through this thing within 12 to 24 months. And this isn't the big downturn. You've got guys like Ray Dalio saying this is going to be worse than the global financial crisis and it's going to be worse than the Great Depression. You've got other people like Bill Anderson saying it'll be a blip on the radar long term. You've got Commonwealth Bank coming out and saying they believe prices in Sydney and Melbourne are going to decline by 10% in the next six months. What Simon and I have realised is that nobody actually knows what the hell is coming next and neither do we, which is why in this video today, Simon's going to sort of interview me based on a really cool conversation that I saw Fred Harrison have. Fred wrote the book, The Power in the Land, back in 1983, predicting the 1990 recession. He wrote Boom Bust in 2005, predicting the global financial crisis years before it happened. And he's the only economist in the world over the last 50 years that has been accurately forecasting what the hell is going on at different parts of the cycle. So he actually did an interview with Cycles Trends and Forecast, which is a company that Phil Anderson used to work with in particular. And it went for probably 30 or so minutes. There was a lot of fluff in there, but there was some absolute key points in there. So why don't you kind of intro the video and what cycles trends and forecasts we're kind of trying to get out of Fred. Um, so they run a really cool subscription service where you can just get different updates on different things. Um, I've been following it now for three and a half years and, and really value the content from Catherine Cashmore and the interviews with people like Fred Harrison. But effectively they sat down and went, Fred, what's going on based on your experience right now? And is this different to what you're expecting? Is this different to the 18 and a half year real estate cycle that you've been famous for researching. Because what Fred did is he looked at 350 years of booms and busts and mid cycle slowdowns in the UK market. And then Phil Anderson went and took that and looked at 250 years in the American market. And that's how we sort of got this idea around market cycles. Now, what he goes on to say is that nobody ever could have predicted that the coronavirus was going to be the big thing except for bill gates except for bill gates <laughs> has he actually done that yeah he predicted it a little while ago he's been predicting a pandemic for a while um but he's been doing some really cool stuff out there as well which we've been following you know i know that him and warren buffett chipped in about 30 million dollars yeah. to try and find a solution to this in terms of a vaccine which is just beautiful that those guys are in such a strong position to be able to help so no one could have foreseen um the coronavirus coming outside of bill gates <laughs> apparently um all the devastating impact it was going to have and what fred goes on to say at the um, front end of his interview is that the world obviously had to take the humanitarian approach to this crisis now i was looking last night there's been 170,000 deaths globally mm. so far which is absolutely devastating for so many families around the world and you know just absolutely horrible and if we hadn't have taken a really strong approach in terms of the governments and businesses around the world to slow things down that number could be a million people by now so the world and the governments around the world took a humanitarian approach to solving the issue which is self-isolation being the, the major way that's been effectively controlling it in the countries like australia where things haven't gone absolutely crazy like in the us i saw seven hundred thousand cases now mm. you know it's with only a hundred yesterday which is beautiful to obviously hear that they're sort of getting on top of it now but you know, he, he went on to say that because the governments have stepped in and taken that angle, which obviously ethically as human beings, we have to protect our vulnerable citizens and it was the right thing to do, that the governments around the world would do anything they can in terms of reducing interest rates, printing money, dropping helicopter money and bailing us out of this to get things ticking off in the right direction. And you see people in the G20 countries already committing to $8 trillion of printed money and bailout money you know, the problem is going to go away over time. We are going to find a vaccine or enough people are going to have been exposed to the virus side of it for people to be able to come out into society again. And then at that point, the governments are just throwing money or oil on a fire right now to try and sort out where we'll be 12 months, 15 months, five years from today. So I'm really confident long term. Hey, Red. Hey, Red. <laughs> um, that we will get through it. And Fred had the same thing. Yeah. So what would, what did you get out of the interview like what what did you feel as though by the end of it 
was the most important parts. You know, from watching that plus Ray Dalio's interview, I know there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. And for some of us, some people can't see a light right now. It's very, very dark for people that have lost their jobs or in exposed financial positions. For other people, it's obviously a once in a 10 year buying opportunity, but we, there is going to be a light at the end of the tunnel, whether it's 12 months from now or two, three years from now, we will get through this. And long-term, as Ray Dalio says, it will look like a blip on the long-term radar in terms of recessions. Um, you know, that said, it's obviously going to be a challenging time for some people. We're not going to get back to full business as usual as quickly as we thought we would. The number one thing I got out though, was Fred still believes that we are in the mid cycle point. Um, according to him, it's the 13th mid cycle slowdown we've been through in the last 350 years. And that because the governments can bail us out now by printing all this money and throwing it onto the fire, it's going to create a, firstly, a way of getting us out. Secondly, a ridiculous boom in asset prices because all of that money is going to end up in land values or the stock markets. Mm. And then we're going to end up with a bubble. He believes, same as Phil Anderson, around about 2026 will be the top, 2025. And then at that point, he's much more concerned because at that point, the banks will be over leveraged, people will be over leveraged, and the governments will be over leveraged. And it will be both banks and governments failing at the same time, which will create a major issue. But, you know, what it looks like is politicians around the world are simply doing what they do, kicking the can down the road handballing it to future generations, the debt, and also, you know, handballing the issue to the next political party that gets in. So you mentioned that it was a, a little bit deeper than expected because of the coronavirus. Do you want to elaborate a little bit of what Fred was talking about there? Yeah, like in a normal mid-cycle slowdown point, we'd be looking at somewhere between 20% and 45% drops in the stock market over the 24 months of that period of time. Um, sometimes we can see between um, no change in property prices to a 15% change in property prices in terms of a decline. Um, because of the coronavirus, we've got 10%, 15% unemployment in Australia right now. We've got a lot of people that are also underemployed. Um, obviously, that's creating a slightly deeper than expected thing. The other thing that um, Fred said is that obviously there's a hell of a lot more money in the global mm. economy now than there was 10 years ago and so every time we go through a mid-cycle slowdown or a great depression or a gfc or whatever they want to call it at the time it gets worse because there's more people we're more globalized the cycle is connecting more than ever like it used to be america australia and, and europe now it's asia india as well as that um so these cycles because there's more international investors trading markets become worse there's more speculation and therefore the downturns are going to be more severe throughout our lifetime than they've ever been in our parents' lifetimes. So basically you've got more money in the market, bigger bigger rises, bigger falls, which have just come off the biggest fall run in history from sort of 2011 through to the coronavirus. Um, basically nobody knew the coronavirus was coming and that sort of brought it on. But this has happened in the past. Like it looks different always. There's always a different event that comes on, but it's happened in the past it'll happen in the future we will get through this time and we'll be better for it by the end of it it's always going to be hard it's always going to be tough you know when people's lives are being impacted when their families are being impacted when their finances are being impacted and their jobs that's never going to be an easy time but there is light at the end of the tunnel guys we will get through this remain positive if you're not in a strong financial position, do whatever you can at the moment to reduce your expenses and to manage and survive this. If you're in a strong financial position, then some of the blue chip stocks in Australia are on sale at 40 cents in the dollar. You've got some of the property markets like Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane um, with some distressed sales at the moment, some off market sales that are coming through now that are very, very good long-term buying. So we wish you all the best. Please stay safe. Check out Fred Harrison's work. Ray Dalio's work, Warren Buffett's work, um, and Phil Anderson's work. Those guys are the ones that have been following this cycle for the last 40, 50 years. They're the ones that you wanna be listening to and we'll just be passing their information through this channel. We wish you all the best guys, stay safe.